I got this HP 5350B microwave frequency counter a few years ago, and one thing that you can see is that the backlight of this is not very, uh, it's not very good. It does not provide too much contrast. And I just turn it on, and you can see that you can barely tell whether or not the uh, backlight is on. And when it's dark, you you know that can help you a little bit, but uh, nevertheless, it does not add too much of a contrast. So I'm thinking of putting a few white LEDs in place of the existing bulbs and see if I can make the display easier to read. And I actually did a similar modification to this HP 8642B signal generator a few years back as well. And as you can see, let me just turn it on, and it does take uh, quite some time to boot up. But as you can see here that the result is actually very good and the contrast is pretty high. Actually, it's a lot better than I uh, thought it would turn out to be. So, let me bring that 5350B down and see how easy it is to modify the backlight. And if it is as easy as this 8642B, then it will be another nice display as well. So, let's bring that down and we will take a look. And I just open it up. As you can see, it's a very neat, neatly arranged inside. And uh, since this is not a teardown video, I would not be uh, going through these. But if you're interested, you can take a look on my website and see the uh, the tear the detailed teardown I did uh, back in 2014. Anyway, I think to reach the uh, the front panel, I think I have to take these screws out and uh, possibly some other screws on the side or at the bottom. Let me work on that and uh, we'll see. Okay, it looks like we have the, uh, uh, the screws around the panels removed. There are quite a few of them. Um, now I can actually pull this out. Unfortunately, I still need to uh, remove some of the connection cables before we can actually free the free panel. And uh, after that, I will have to uh, uh, remove this board back here, which I'll show you after I take it out. And hopefully we can see the LCD. And that's actually our primary goal today, is to replace the backlight here. Okay, so now I managed to actually be able to fold this backwards because I removed uh, one of this uh, uh, coax cables. And uh, I was hoping that this thing actually comes out from the other side, but seems like it's welded on. And this side is, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of like a um, a tab that secures onto the, the top frame. But I think during production, it's probably bent. This, you know, like it's a little bit bent. So uh, to make it fit here. And uh, you do see that we have quite a few screws. I'm not sure actually which ones are the ones that is, uh, you know, responsible for fastening this uh, to the uh, actual LCD, or which one is actually to remove the uh, the LCD from the mount. But we need to figure that out so that I can uh, take this out, this whole uh, LCD portion out, and I think. Uh, if without, if with any luck, we should find the uh, the lights located on either side of this board. So uh, let me work on that, and uh, we'll see where we get. Okay, so now all the screws are removed. Let's uh, take a look to see. Um, uh, hopefully, I can open it up. Yep. Oh wait. Oh, as you can see that, these are actually LEDs. So these are, I'm guessing that these are just uh, yellow LEDs. So let's actually power it up to take a look to see. So I was wrong. I thought these are just some kind of fluorescent bulbs, but I guess they already made them LEDs. Um, so maybe we can just replace these with a, a stronger, a brighter version. Uh, let's see how bright these are first. Uh, let me power it up gently. Uh, let's uh, power it up. Hang on. So let me uh, power it up, and uh, we will see if we can uh, figure out what might be the best to to do this. 
So let me turn it on. Okay, so now it's actually booting up and uh, I don't want to touch this. Yes, yeah, so, so that's normal because when we're pressing, uh, the frame actually presses on it. So the zebra stripes here actually get uh, nice contact when you are, when the, 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 the frame is on. But as you can see here, uh, these yellow LEDs are extremely uh, weak. So that is actually, uh, I think, if I change these to whites, I bet they're gonna be much better. So let's first measure the, uh, the voltage drop, drop of these LEDs, just to get a sense of whether or not we can use the uh, uh, white LEDs. Actually, I think we might not have an issue because these are actually, uh, I don't know if you can see this, these, let me just zoom it in here, uh, where's the, as you can see, uh, all these LEDs are actually in parallel. So I reckon that we can just uh, simply swap them out. But for, uh, so for our white LEDs, the voltage drop is gonna be a little bit higher than this, but not that much more. So let's take a look at uh, what is the voltage per LED here. So I need to be careful not to short anything up. Okay, so it's about 2.3 volts. So that's about uh, uh, 0.3 volts. Okay, so it's not all the same. So some of these probably have been, uh, you know, subject to aging more than others. But uh, nevertheless, they're between 2 and 2.3, 2.4 volts. So I think if I'm correct, um, the voltage coming in gonna be five. So I think we can safely replace these with white LEDs. So let me do that and um, we will see uh, how much of an improvement it is. Cause these, these are really dim. I mean, right now, yes, the lab is uh, pretty bright, but uh, even, you know, even when I'm not, um, I don't know how well you can see it. I mean, these are barely lit. So I think we can improve the, uh, the brightness quite a bit by replacing these. So let me work on that and uh, we'll see after I replace these LEDs. Okay, that was not the uh, easiest thing to replace as you know, these are freestanding and it took a lot of uh, time to align them properly and you know I could probably spend a little bit more time to make it even more aligned but I think that will do the job so let's uh, power it up and uh, see um, if uh, it makes any difference I think it will because these white LEDs are very efficient and they should be much brighter so let's uh, turn it on oh look at that so wow, this is clearly, uh, yeah, don't worry about that uh, uh, LCD thingy because uh, I'm about to uh, put that back and then as soon as I put pressure that uh, will go away. But well, you know, it, it looks very, very good. And I think it's actually um, a lot better than I thought it would turn out to be. So let me put everything back in place and uh, we will, uh, uh, you know, make a comparison and take a look. Okay, now a moment of truth. And as you can see that uh, this does light up pretty nicely and uh, now the uh, the screen is of a much higher contrast. Uh, compared to that of this 8642B, you can see that the screen, the backlight is not very uniform. That's of course because we just have uh, this 10 LEDs shining from either side and there's nothing in between. It's just the empty space behind this LCD. Whereas for this 8642B, there's a uh, light spreader behind the uh, LCD, so making it much more uniform. So, but besides that, you can see that the result is quite good. So let's take a look at uh, just measuring a uh, signal in case you haven't, see this, haven't seen this uh, AD sorry 5350 B before so let's set this at let's say 1.5 gigahertz and to set this uh, frequency uh, amplitude to let's just say 0 dBm and now you can see that uh, we're 
showing exactly 1.5 gigahertz. That's because I have the clock uh, synchronized with this uh, frequency generator. Anyway, so, you know, it looks quite nice and I'm pretty satisfied with this modification. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up and I will catch up with you next time.